Okay, so what can we say about Tamoio Rio Rio Rio? <laughs> I love the title of this piece. Anyway, so let's have a look at the detail. So we've got, now when I first played this through, I thought, oh, I, I really do like this. You know, I, it sounds very, I don't know, it just sounds, sounds very South American, doesn't it? We'll go over that in a minute. That's quite fiddly, isn't it? So we've got. Now, I played this through and I started to really enjoy the music and then I put the backing track on and I thought, hmm. The, um, the piano part sort of ties you down a little bit on this. You, you kind of um, you kind of want to play it with more flexibility, I think. Well, I did anyway, you know, as I come down there. Quite like playing this with, with lots of flexibility, but as soon as you put the piano part to it, the piano part is going jum jing jum jing because the piano part's in quavers it really sort of ties you down a bit and and you can't sort of play it quite so freely so let's go over some of the detail now i just did mention about that a flat to b flat those grace notes in there now the success of this piece does kind of really hinge on this bar to a certain extent because it, it's the reoccurring theme so you can't afford to get it wrong and it keeps coming back doesn't it to haunt you so A flat to B flat, a quick way of doing that, you can just lift up that first finger, which is a nice easy way of doing it. But that doesn't make it, you know, a piece of cake. Um, you've still got a time, because you really need to tongue that first grace note, it's still not ever so easy to fit in there and get it perfect every time. Well, I found, I found so anyway, so... Um, So that's how it works in slow motion. Now, if I do like the side key version, A flat to B flat. It's not quite so slick, you know, I can't quite sort of, can't quite fit it in there as, as neat. Um, but you might find that doing it that way, that you get it more consistently the same every time. So just try it both ways and see what you prefer. But certainly from a, from a grace note point of view, you can't beat just sort of lifting that finger up very quickly, I think. And as we move through, let's go into the second line. Uh, just watch all the flats here, quite fiddle, isn't it? Now it's sort of, it means you have to go a certain way around the keys if you haven't got this left hand lever for the E flat. So you've got the uh, diddle dum dum so you've got to go uh, right hand E flat, left hand D flats, um, right hand Cs, so. And notice that as I came down there, I just changed the tongue in a little bit. Now, one of my other little gripes with this piece is it's just ta 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 It's just tonguing and tonguing. This it feels like there's too much tonguing in there. Um, I seem to cheat the tonguing on all my pieces, I think. But but this one, it just does seem like a lot of unnecessary tonguing, I think, doesn't there? So as you go through 15, 16, 17, 18. And then you're tonguing again. Ta 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 ta. So it's just tonguing and tonguing and tonguing. I think personally, it just needs breaking up with a bit of slur to tongue to slur to tongue to, just to make it less sort of da 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 da. So yeah. So as I came down seventeen there. I think those quavers sound good um, if they're tongued, don't they? But before that, personally, I prefer the slow to tongue to, and it just um, 
it just lightens it a little bit. Um, and moving on to 23, um, I would suggest perhaps a right hand C and a left hand D fat, D fat, D flat for that grace note there. And here I try to sort of make it a little bit uh, sound like I'm kind of, you know, a little bit more improvisatory. So instead of like, da 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 da, a bit more ba ba bum, you know, a bit more kind of play it how I just, you know, how I want to play it really. Just so it sounds a bit, you know, kind of free and easy. And moving on, even more tonguing at 27. Again, let's let's change that a little bit. Let's put some slow to tongue to in there, maybe. So I think do be prepared to just play around with it a little bit. I would change some of the phrasing a little bit. Who's arranged it? Arranged by Franklin Gelnick. Come on, Franklin, put some slurring in there, please. You know, just a little bit more. Um, so I personally, you know, I think it just needs a lightening a little bit. It sounds a bit da 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 all the way through a bit. Not all the way through, but some parts of it. Uh, and then moving on, we've got a little key change here. We've got um, a few lines of a slightly different theme, haven't we? Um, so it kind of starts really the quaver before, doesn't it? The key change. I've changed the phrase in there slightly, haven't I? So I've done a breath before the C to the A there. Just sounds better, doesn't it? Um, but there is, um, it does, it has actually marked again, the arrangement has marked just to slur over that bar and not to slur to the next bar, but kind of sounds, I don't know, I like my version. And then we come back to our F minor idea yet again. And then a satisfying ending, I think. Um, And you'll notice it's another one of those pieces yet again um, in the ABRSM list that has no rests in it. Not many anyway, certainly don't get any time off. Um, so mark on the breathing. I think the, the breathing is, is one of the tricky aspects of the piece. You, you do find if you, if you don't get the breathing right and you don't get the right in and outs of air, um, you'll get a little bit exasperated towards the end. So just be careful, don't, um, there's a way of, I think more experienced players have got a way of regulating this. You know, you kind of like know when to play on empty for a bar or two and then go to the next big breath. Um, so just regulate your air carefully. So know when to take your little breath and then know where to fill up uh, at this, like the start of a new section or something and know where to, to fill up for a big breath. So I think that's all I'm going to say on the tutorial side of things. So generally speaking, I like this piece. It's got a lovely South American sort of flavor to it. I like the main tune. The piano part sort of ties you down a little bit with it being in quavers, but try to play it expressively and try to play it with freedom, but also in time as well. I think that's the challenge, isn't it? And of course the breathing difficulties, you've got to really pace the breathing carefully and know how to get through it without sort of getting too out of whack with your with your breathing. So have a go at playing along with the accompaniment all by yourself now and see if you can get it really in time. Here we go.
Okay, so that's it for Tamoio. I think um, I think that's a wrap for this one. Best of luck for that. So if you did enjoy that tutorial and you've made use of it, then of course don't forget to click that like button. Maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, let me know how you're getting on with Grade 6. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're playing this piece, the best of luck for Grade 6. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.